My youngest son that he met in the house is a cancer researcher in Philadelphia and they're expecting their first child in a few weeks time. The elder brother to that one, Joshua, is a surgeon in Glasgow, Scotland. And the elder brother to Joshua is Livingston, he's a cancer researcher in London. And Livingston's elder sister is a doctor in Dallas. And the elder sister to that one is an emergency doctor in Dallas. <laughs> now I'll tell you why it is so. It's so because my wife is a trained midwife. So when they were young, they used to follow her to the hospital. And they all followed her. I tried by every means for anybody to follow me. Nobody followed me. <laughs> so, so, so uh, it's all due to the Lord's faithfulness. I'm standing here this morning not because I am a preacher. I'm standing here this morning because my heart is excited. Jesus Christ excites my heart. Mm. I stand here this morning as somebody who wants to bear witness to the living reality yes. of the truth that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead Amen. and that he does miracles yes. and that he saves lives. Yes. Now, plus our five children, we also adopted between 30 and 40 others. Not because we wanted to adopt, there were circumstances that were difficult and we ended up having those. Most of those have now grown up and we only have about four adopted in the house and the youngest is 19. And uh, through the children growing up in the house, I have how many minutes? 25? Yeah. I've not started yet. <laughs> 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 right. Through seeing what the Lord was doing in the lives of those troubled children in the house, mm -hmm. we had a burden to build a residential school in order to gather more children from all over the country and influence them and love them in the hope and expectation that the Lord will minister life and save many of them. Mm -hmm. That was 20 something years ago, 21 years ago. And I stand here to testify that when you gather children from different homes, from different parts of the country, in fact some from Canada, some from France, some from America, and you put them all in one residential place, you're looking for trouble. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're looking for disaster. And boy, when they, at one point we had 500, 300 girls in one place, 200 boys, boy, and uh, when you are cornered and call upon the name of the Lord, he does miracles. Yeah. Now I want to testify to you that many of those children who came to school at the beginning, many of them came to the Lord. I have no little time to tell you how and what happened, but maybe in the future, God opening doors, I will tell you more of that. And through seeing God move in the residential school, the Lord put in our hearts to build a hospital. Because we reasoned that, well, through school we had access to parents and to all kinds of people in all ranks of society. And we reasoned that when people are sick, because some of those children were sick, we took them to the hospital, we were not satisfied with the kind of care. So we reasoned that when people are sick, they are more vulnerable, they are more prone to listen to what you're saying. So we built a hospital, it's 120 beds, it's massive. And, uh, Many sick people have been coming there and we've had opportunity to laugh, to share the gospel and boy, there are many wonderful things happening there as well as challenges. And through life experiences, difficulties, challenges, some of them horrible, terrible, I have seen the hand of God. I have seen the manifestation of the reality of the power of Jesus Christ in life and in circumstances to put a smile on the face of somebody that has been mourning and mourning for years. I have also seen in the church back in Kongsamba where I come from because the past few months it has pleased the Lord to move and he's moving in the church there. I've also seen in the church there for the past few months some spectacular wonderful things happen. It may not be true here but let me just once I open the Bible, start counting the minutes. 
<laughs> it may not be true here, but look, in our church back at home, we have some people that come there, they sit down, they don't pray, they don't sing, they don't participate, but they come. And uh, some of them are married. So some sisters will come with their husbands and they will sing, they will pray, the husbands sit down. Some husbands will come with their wives and the husbands will sing when they sit down. But in the recent months, we've seen some miracle things. We've seen the Lord stretch out his hand to those people who used to sit down and touch their hearts and melted their hearts and break down the indifference and the resistances. And we've seen them respond to God in some spectacular ways. And they've become so sweet. And we thought that God was reserving those people there for some special miracles at specific times to encourage our faith. That's right. So I am excited because I want to talk to you this morning about Jesus. I don't want to leave you with stories, even with testimonies. I want to leave you with Jesus. Yeah. And so let's go to the scripture, shall we? Start counting the minutes, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to talk to you about three words or three sentences. Let me tell them to you before we go to the scriptures. In Mark's gospel, we shall see Jesus compelled, pushed, led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness, into trouble. Mm. In Luke's gospel, we shall see Jesus go through that. So the first thing is, into trouble, <laughs> during trouble, and the last thing is, we shall see Jesus come out of it. And that is a path that the Holy Spirit and that God wants each one of us who love him, who believe in him, to follow his footsteps mm. by being obedient to the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and to God. So, let's start in Mark's Gospel, shall we? <clears throat> and uh, uh, chapter... One, chapter one of Matt's Gospel, verse, well, verse 12, <clears throat> verse 12, then the Spirit compelled Jesus to go into the wilderness, Did you, is, some versions he pushed him. He compelled him to go into the wilderness. Now that came after the glorious, wonderful experience that took place when John the Baptist baptized Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's just some verses before. When John the Baptist baptized Jesus, as it is written, heavens opened. And God the Father gave a public testimony, public approval, expression of his satisfaction with his son. And it was marvelous, wonderful, and whenever through faith, through obedience, you receive that testimony, that witness in your heart of God's approval, it is marvelous, wonderful. And it is God's will that we should not be just blind, blind followers. You know what? God wants to be so real and personal with each one of us that when we speak, he hears. When he speaks, we hear. Yeah. There should be communication between my spirit and God. Mm. I don't want to be praying to the unknown God or to the imaginary God because God is real. Yeah. God is a person. And I rejoice to declare to you what many of you already know, beloved. He speaks. You know, God speaks. Yeah. Mm. And he wants you to hear his voice and recognize that he is the one speaking. Mm. So he declared publicly 
the, his pleasure. This is my beloved son in whom I find great pleasure. And the dove came down, the Holy Spirit came down in the form of a dove and rested upon Jesus. And for Jesus, that must have been an incredibly mm -hmm. wonderful experience. Mm -hmm. But immediately after that, immediately after that is the verse we just read. Mm -hmm. Immediately following that is the verse we just read. The Holy Spirit mm. compelled, now that shows hesitation, pushed Jesus into the wilderness. Now, mm. in life, things will not always be as we expected or wanted. least it has been so in my life and in our circumstances back in Cameroon in many people's lives things are not always turning out the way we wanted or the way we expected but when things don't go the way we expected there is no need to despair because beloved God is in control of our lives if you trust in Jesus Christ with all your heart if you believe in God with all your heart, you are saved and you are safe. Saved and safe. You are not a victim of circumstances. You are not a victim of the devil. When you trust in the Lord Jesus, he saves you and he's promised to keep you by the power of God. And that's what he does. And I can tell you that coming from a place where we don't have any plan B's when you're in trouble. You know, here in the West, we have many plan B's, you know. If your prayer doesn't work, you can go and see a specialist. <laughs> yes, yes. And sometimes when you're praying, you don't even believe what you're saying because you know where you will go to. No wonder you do not know, you don't, for many people, you don't experience the reality of the presence and power of Jesus. Now, Jesus, the Holy Spirit led Jesus. Now, we want the Holy Spirit to lead us. Jesus says that when he's come, he will lead us into all truth. Yeah. But there is a lot of truth that we will learn and only learn when things have gone the way we did not want. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> now, beloved, And so, he brought him in there. For what purpose? To be tempted. He brought him into the wilderness, an environment that nobody would want to live in or want to go into. Into a set of circumstances and happenings and surroundings that you would not have chosen or expected ever, 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 ever to come your way. Mm -hmm. Many people are living there. Mm -hmm. And in that particular environment and set of circumstances where nothing is what you wanted, there's somebody who loves to live that place. That place. Mm -hmm. Did you hear what I said? Somebody likes to live there. Mm -hmm. And his name is the devil. Mm -hmm. He likes it when you have problems. He likes it when you are not happy. He likes it when the circumstances of your life and what you're going through is not what you wanted. He likes it because he will come there to use those kind of circumstances to try and smear God and tie you into knots with his lies and insinuations. Yeah. Boy, I have, I, 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 what I'm telling you now, I didn't know it at the beginning. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> I didn't know it at the beginning. We don't learn it in school. We learn it as we relate to Jesus and we have a relationship, a living relationship with God. When you gather so many children in the house in residential school, as I told you before, I can't go into details, beloved, you are in for trouble. You are in for trouble. And you are going to face temptations and trials. And if you are not careful, because of those difficulties, because of those troubles, 
you will find yourself secretly scandalized, mm. offended, discouraged. Mm. But Jesus went there, God sent him there because God had confidence in his son. And God knew that when his son would go into these difficulties, instead of the devil tying him in knots, he will expose, Jesus will expose the emptiness and the shallowness of his intimidations. Yes? Why do you have problems? Because God wants that in your problems, you should choose right. Mm -hmm. What to think, what to believe, what to hold. Mm -hmm. If you choose right in your difficulties, what to believe, if you choose the word of God, if you choose to trust in him no matter what, you know what? By choosing the word of God, by depending upon the Holy Ghost to give you strength, to help you, to keep you. If you choose that, you are going to expose the emptiness and shallowness of the intimidations of the devil. Yeah. Out of your weakness, God will make you strong. Yeah. And strong because it is important. It's important because every single individual who wants to preach the gospel, who wants to communicate the life of God, must have personal victory. Mm. You must have personal victory in a place where there's no crowd like this. You must have personal victory in your room alone. You must have personal victory in the place of work. You must have personal victory in your troubles, not when they're finished, but in them. Yeah. You must shame the devil without opening your mouth, but by choosing to believe God, come what may. Mm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I want to hear a big amen to that. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Brethren, this is the truth. God is not going to create a new garden of Eden where you will live in harmony with everything else and everything is all right. No, 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 no. We live in the world. And Jesus said, Father, keep them here. Keep them here. Keep them in the set of circumstances that they were born into, in that family, in that town, in that church. Keep them in that environment with the people that they have met. Some of the people they don't like, some of the people they wouldn't have wanted to have anything to do with them, keep them there. Keep them in hell. Let the weak brothers and sisters who haven't got any strength, but who only trust in God and receive help from the Holy Ghost, be a blow, a shame to the devil, and glory to Jesus, and glory to God, so that it should be said about you, out of her witnesses, out of his witnesses, God made him strong. So Jesus is pushed into this place. And he is now in the wilderness. And one of the gospel writers says he was with the wild beasts in a very hostile environment. But Jesus is never in danger. He has never ever been in danger wherever he went. And I can tell you, beloved, when you trust him, you are not in danger. You are not in danger. I don't want to be creating excitement here. I will tell you stories about Africa, about where I come from. Where we would make you understand where I come from to say what I am saying. When you trust the Lord, you are not in danger. The devil hasn't got free to do what he likes. No way. Mm -hmm. So Jesus came into that desert place, hostile environment. And there, the first temptation has to do with needs needs my personal needs what i need you know what you want to preach the gospel you must defeat the devil there mm. you start there standing here and talking to public to people in the crowd is easy mm. it is not oratory it is not knowledge it's not that but it is the power that God has given you, the victory God has given you in secret, when you find out that your needs are not there, 
your basic needs, the things you have a right to. You have believed, you heard God express his joy and satisfaction for the fact that you've trusted in his son, you are saved, you're all right, but suddenly you find yourself in a situation where you don't have food, you don't have this, you don't have this. You know, that's Israel in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. That's Israel in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And God brought Israel in the wilderness to teach them one thing. Or many things, of course, one of them was this. Man shall not live yeah. by bread alone, mm. but by every word that proceeds from his mouth. Mm. So, you find yourself, your basic needs you don't have, and there you are tempted. When you have need, the tempter knocks at the door. Mm. And there are all kinds of needs. And if you don't have what you want, what did Jesus do? What was his reaction in this set of circumstances? He didn't have food, which is legitimate. He didn't have this, which is legitimate. He didn't, but you know what he had? He had bread, mm. real bread. Mm -hmm. He had the word of God. Mm -hmm. he, he was content. He was satisfied in his heart with what God has given him and what God has mm. withheld from him. That satisfaction, that contentment is the Holy Spirit that produces it in the heart. Mm. I tell you, brethren, in back in Kong Sabah, I have children that regret that they were born in the families they were born in. Some of them tell me, I wish my dad was different. I wish my mom. I said, no, stop, stop, stop. God made no mistake. Mm. I have men that regret the wives that got married. They said, well, if I knew what I now know, I wouldn't have married them. I said, stop, stop. I have to, all over the place, all over the place, because I know. That if you receive the word of God and trust in him and you receive help from the Holy Ghost, you can live anywhere. You can live in any situation. You can have your natural needs not met, but God is fulfilling your heart and satisfying your heart. And the devil comes with his temptation and you say, get thee behind me. Get thee behind me. You can come to me many times and say, you are hopeless. I said, yes, God created me. And out of this hopelessness, he's going to do something wonderful, which is what he's doing. That's right. Hallelujah, I love that. <laughs> yes, brethren, look, you've got to believe in the Lord. You've got to be strong in the faith. You've got to learn to fight the good fight of faith. What does that mean? Choose the word of God and believe it for life or for death. Yeah. I don't want to see you with a long face. Oh, no, no, it's not here. Back in Africa, when somebody's not happy with the face. <laughs> what is wrong with you? I have this, I have this. It, until we leave this world, until we leave this world in 50 years, 40 years, 30 years, there will always be things that are not right. Mm. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. People will always do what they don't like. Mm. But I want you to find a place in Jesus, a relation, in a relationship with Jesus, where if the tempter comes to you because you are dissatisfied, instead of turning, being distracted to look at your problems, your eyes will be focused on the Lord Jesus and the Holy Spirit will help you in your heart and you will defeat the devil in that place and put him to open shame. Yeah. You say, do you slay me, Lord. I will worship you. I will save you. If I don't have this, I have you. Yeah. Yes. That's right. Amen. Amen. Oh, Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I don't have this. I don't have this, but I have you and it is enough. Yeah. It is enough for me. So trust in the Lord Jesus Christ with all your heart, whatever you are going through now, mm. whatever has happened, whatever has been happening that you don't like, whatever is breaking your heart, you are not let in there to be destroyed. Mm. In that desperate place, if you turn to the Lord, if you call upon his name, you know what? He will set you free in that situation and put strength faith, power in your heart to live in that situation and glorify his name in that situation. Mm. Glory to God. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> so, it was in the realm of needs, it was in the realm of ambition. So, the devil, when Jesus said to the devil, man shall not live by bread alone, by saying that he chose, he showed us that it's by the word of God, by faith in what he has said, 
by abiding and enduring in what he has said that you shut up the mouth of the lion. Mm -hmm. You know, it's written that by faith. Some people close the mouth of lions, talking about Daniel. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. There's a lion here. Shut up his mouth, not by shouting, but by choosing the word of God, mm. by enduring here, because you know that at the end of this, he is going to glorify his name. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know, beloved, today we can learn many lessons from what happened to Lazarus. I am glad he died. Mm. Because through his death, what did Mary and Martha see? The glory of God. Mm. And, and, and the two of them changed. When Lazarus died, Mary and Martha, Martha also died. Their confidence in Jesus died. Mm. Their faith died. Lazarus was buried in a grave, but they were there on the floor in mud and dust with vexation in their hearts that Jesus didn't do the things they expected him to do. Mm. That's right. And Jesus came there. You know the story. Jesus came there and took them and, well, took matter when Mary was too angry to respond to anything. There are people like that. But Jesus went with matter to the graveside and stood right there and the man was thinking. But there was something that was thinking more than Lazarus. It was the reaction of Mary. You know, Mary, when Jesus came, Mary fell on the ground and you were not here. You like, didn't come on time. That's, that's, that's the stench of unbelief, mm. protesting, angry. Mm. The person that was commended because Jesus had said earlier that Mary had chosen the best part. Yes, the person that was commended was more offended because I did not expect that after that commendation, I will say, ask you something and you don't do it. Well, I didn't do it because I prepared you to see something greater. Oh. That's right. He's not answering your prayer because he wants to answer in a bigger way. Mm. But the question is, will you endure? Because he said to Martha, uh, to Martha, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. Jesus stood there and said, thank you, Father, that you've heard me. And said, Lazarus, come forth. And the man that was bound, came forth, still bound. And stood there. And he said, Lucy, no. And they took off all his things. And I'm sure his face was like the face of a newborn baby. Mm. It must have been handsome. <laughs> and, uh, and so when, when Mata saw the face of his brother, she saw the glory of God. She saw something about Jesus she did not know. Mm. When Mary, who was lying down on the ground there, protesting, saw Lazarus, what do you think she would do? She, 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 it took her time to say thank you. And in chapter 12, she says thank you by taking that alabaster box, mm. that precious gift, that she brought it to Jesus. That was her own, her own response to what Jesus had just done. And she brought it there. But you know, beloved, I just want to encourage you. Don't be discouraged because things are tough. Mm. Don't let the whispering voice fool you. Don't let anybody discourage you. Don't get depressed. Don't get... Pity yourself. Don't, don't go there. Don't go there. There are better things for you that the Lord has prepared. There are better things for us that the Lord has prepared. We enter into possession of these things, beloved, by believing and by persevering and enduring. Yes, by fighting the good fight of faith. By, believe, by choosing to believe God in adversity. We shut up the mouth of the roaring lion by choosing the word of God. Amen. The whispering voice that comes to you with evidence. You say, do you see this? Do you see this? His mouth is shut up because you trust God. Yet you are weak. But by faith you are strong. Yeah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Let Jesus to the temple. Lift up. Do something spectacular here. Do something spectacular here. And everybody will say, wow. Mm. It's not written like that. I'm, 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 I'm just going <laughs> to... <laughs> do something spectacular. Fall down. The Bible says... Jesus says what? That's, that's temptation. Temptation. And so in the difficult way somebody's going through difficulties, there are many temptations there. One is to, to despair and one is to have huge ambitions. Here. But the best is to submit your spirit to Christ. Mm -hmm. It's to say, here am I for you, Lord. I don't understand, but you know. I don't understand much, but I know you love me. 
when the devil had exhausted everything, he had one last weapon. His final weapon was to take Jesus and show him the riches of the world and the kingdoms of the world. He believes very much that if you are having trouble and you see he shows you those beautiful things there, your heart will go for it. Making a mistake with Jesus. When he showed this kingdom, he said to Jesus, I don't ask much. I only ask for one thing. Just kneel down here and worship me. And I will give you everything. Jesus, something welled up in his heart. Mm. And he said, get thee behind me. Such thoughts that make me to be discontented, dissatisfied. Get thee behind me, he said. Get thee behind me. I have no place for that. That's Jesus in the wilderness. That's Jesus being tempted in and out in different domains and different angles. But all the time, Jesus chooses to believe the word of God. Jesus stands firm. He endures. Of course, that wilderness we just read there is a small shadow of the real wilderness, which was the cross. Mm -hmm. Which was the cross. And Jesus holds firm the word of God. And he says, no, 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 no. And at the end of the temptations of Jesus, now that's the best part. <laughs> now you can listen to this, if you didn't hear the rest. <laughs> at the end of the temptations of Jesus, in Luke's Gospel chapter 4, he says this, and Jesus returned. He came out from those troubles in the power Amen. of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That expresses joy yes. and satisfaction. Mm -hmm. The Spirit brought him in, and in these troubles, he chose faith. He trusted God. He persevered. And at the end of it all, he is coming out full of power and authority. Mm -hmm. You know what he went to? Glory to Nazareth. He went to Nazareth in the power and authority of the Holy Ghost. You know what he was going to do in Nazareth? He was going to preach. And he stood out in the temple, in the synagogue, and he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me mm. because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Who is talking? It's somebody who has got victory over the devil in the secret place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the secret place. In his heart. In his heart. Because he has chosen faith, he has chosen the word of God, the Lord is so pleased with him that he set him out to open prison doors, to heal broken hearts, to cast out demons, to mm -hmm. proclaim the good news. Hallelujah. I love that. Because it works. Mm -hmm. It works. And this is the school that the Lord is bringing us into. But this is the school here. You have been enrolled into it without even knowing. <laughs> you are enrolled in it and whilst you are in it you will have there are things that happen whatever happens keep your eyes fixed on Jesus mm. focus your eyes on Jesus in Hebrews chapter 2 it says we do not yet see all things on the head but we see Jesus we see Jesus in chapter 12 it says you're on this race fix your eyes upon Jesus who is the initiator and the perfecter of our faith Receive strength from the Holy Ghost. Choose the word of God and defeat the devil in your private secret place. Sometimes he brings you out of the trouble and you can rejoice. Sometimes he makes you rejoice in the trouble. That's what I find. I find that the Lord is true. His word is true. And wherever you live, whatever you go through, beloved, if you trust the Lord with all your heart, if you are humble and submit yourself under the power and authority of the Holy Spirit, He will lead you. He will lead you when you have needs that are not met. He will lead you away from self-pity. Mm. He will lead you away from regrets. He will lead you to Jesus. Mm. If you have some on ruly thing that arises from your heart and wants to lead you this way, the Holy Spirit will lead you mm. away from ambition, away from self-realization and it will bring you to Jesus. Mm. The Holy Spirit is the best preacher. 
Jesus said that he shall glorify me. And when the Holy Spirit has his way and lays hold of you, you know what he does? He says, this is Jesus. Behold your God. Look upon him and live. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Amen. He preached to me this morning. Mm. <laughs> I was so angry. And what is what he said? The servant of Abraham who went to look for a bride for Isaac. Mm. It's a picture of the Holy Ghost. Mm. That servant <clears throat> had ten columns full of gold, treasure, treasure things, jewelry and things like full. And that servant was praying. He prayed. And that expresses the desire of the Holy Ghost to succeed in connecting each person to our divine Isaac, mm. to Jesus. When he came and stood by the well, he said, let the girl that comes out and I said, give me to drink, give to the come and let Rebecca came. When he went to the house, he described, that's the servant, the wealth of Abraham and how Abraham has given everything to his master Isaac. Mm. And as he was describing, there was evidence there that what he was saying was true. Because Rebecca had some golden bracelets here that he had given. So what he saw, what they saw, and what they heard confirms that the testimony was real. Mm -hmm. And Rebecca heard the descriptions of Isaac, and she could see this wonderful bracelet and see these evidences that she, her heart, her heart went. <laughs> she, her heart went for someone that she had never seen before. I love that. Mm. And that's what the Holy Spirit wants to do. To wheel you and me for Jesus. Yeah. To describe the Lord's faithfulness and power and glory. And his ability to save, beloved, from every situation. In such a way that our hearts go. Mm. You fall in love with Jesus. Yes. I want to fall in love with him afresh. Now, I've been married for 40 years. I was engaged for six years, I told before. So it's 46 years since I met my, my wife now. We're in school together. We were in the same class together. Mm. And I tell you, in two, well, she's not here. I left her in America. I wish she were here. She was sitting right on there. <laughs> 2024, our love for one another is better than it was when we first met. Mm. But we've gone through fires. We've gone through, well, most of them is because of me, not because of her. <laughs> We've gone through all kinds of troubles, all kinds. But look, through our troubles, we found Jesus. Mm. We found Jesus. Mm. He heals the wounds in the heart. Mm. Now, lest you be condemned, if you have fallen in the wilderness, if you had trouble, and instead of believing you fell down, let me tell you another aspect of Jesus. He is that great high priest. Mm. who has compassion on those who have fallen away, on those who have not succeeded. Those, he, he will bring you to restore you back mm. on the right track of faith. Mm. Yeah. So that you will know as an individual, this is not vague, this is not veil, this is reality. This is reality. Mm. Hallelujah. If you want to serve the Lord, beloved, the Lord will take you on this road. It's a personal road. It's so intimate, so private, that the man, the husband may not know what is going on in the wife's, the, the partner's heart. It's so real, the temptation for each person are different. But Jesus is there, the Holy Ghost is there, the Word of God is there. May the Holy Spirit help us to choose to live by faith in the Word of God and shame the devil and glorify God. Yeah. Yeah. I the Amen. Amen. I think I ended up, but, but, but let me say one last thing. <laughs> <laughs> Abraham mm -hmm. believed God, mm -hmm. but he had on his body something that contradicted his faith. Mm -hmm. He was old. Mm -hmm. His wife, old. Scripture says that her, her womb was dead. Mm -hmm. So he believed the word of God. But when he looked at himself, there was nothing there to say, what you're believing is real. Mm. When he looked at Sarah, there was no encouragement there either. Mm -hmm. But you know the testimony that the Holy Spirit gives about Abraham? Mm. He did not stumble. 
he did not consider he did not he refused the messages that his body told him. he refused the contradictions he chose the word of God and by choosing the word of God he glorified God you glorify God when you choose his word not when you sing about glory but when you choose his word that's right Amen. Amen. When you choose his word against the messages that are coming here and there, and you say, Lord, I believe you. You know why? Because the word of God shall be fulfilled. Yeah. You may feel bad today, but that feeling will not last forever. There's only one thing that will remain for, remains forever. The word of God, beloved, and it shall be fulfilled in the lives of those who trust God and believe him. Yeah. See the testimony the Holy Ghost gives about Abraham and Romans. In Romans, you think he's talking about another person. The man had problems, the man had this, but the man had faith. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Glory to God, brethren. So I am to encourage you. Believe in the Lord Jesus with all your heart. Amen. And the Holy Spirit will reveal Christ and make him real to you. And he will help you in your troubles. He will help you in your adversities to stay the course. Mm. If you fall, he'll pick you up. Yeah. Yeah. And one last thing. <laughs> you know, Peter, Peter, you know, the day there was a storm mm. in the sea and uh, Jesus walked in the storm. Mm. And Peter saw him. They saw him and they thought he was a monster. Because they didn't expect that kind of thing to happen. <laughs> and Peter, who was always the first to say, Lord, if it is you, tell me to come. Mm. And Jesus said, Come. <laughs> I admire Peter many times we cast stones at him and even though the water was still going down when he heard come he put his foot on agitated water and he stood and he started going and when he started going he felt good <laughs> that's a miracle this is a miracle this is a miracle I am walking on agitated truck water I am walking and, and as he walked the wind the storms arose this way and this way. The intensity. And his eyes were fixed on Jesus. As he went, this, the storm says, I am here. I'm here. Mm. He turned to look this way. I was I received a message from them. He turned to look this way and received a message from them. And what were the messages? You will die. You will die. You will soon die. You will soon die. And the man, the man, by the time he realized it, he was sinking. Mm. It didn't take time. It doesn't take time to think when you listen to the wrong voice. So may the Holy Ghost keep us fixed and focused on Jesus. Yeah. Choose his word. Yeah. Jesus yeah. says that the Holy Ghost is our helper. He will help you, brother. Yeah. He will help you in your situation. He will put a smile on your face. He will take away depression from your heart. He will take you away from the symmetry where you've been mourning and bring you to the house of worship. Yeah. Glory to God. Glory to Above God. all, you say, shame to the devil. And you preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. I see that.